there's no point in having data centers unless you've got some science behind it. I'm a scientist and that's the first thing I want to say. We have data centers because of the large data program or science programs that are going on and the one that ICSU has launched now is Future Earth and I want to talk a little bit about Future Earth to give you a background to what's going to be required in the future and then look at some of the data management challenges. So Future Earth is a global research platform to provide knowledge and support um, to accelerate our transformations to a sustainable world. It's about putting science, science and its widest framework to use to transform our society, to enable us to live in a future that is increasingly threatened by a number of different global changes and transformations. Future Earth came out of a number of ICSU um, initiatives. Starting, we started looking at global change research as an international, interdisciplinary effort way back in the 1980s with the setup of the World Climate Research Program, and later with IGBP, the International Geosphere Biosphere Program, Diversitas, and the International Human Dimensions Program. And in 2001, it was realized that you can't solve science problems or uh, real problem world problems by sitting in silos and these four activities were sitting in silos and so they created the Earth System Science Partnership. I have to say I don't think the Earth System Science Partnership worked terribly well and so now we're trying to find a new solution for that and that's Future Earth. Future Earth is very new, it's only just being set up but its goals are really to pull communities of scientists together across everything from the physical science through to politics and uh, knowing how to implement science in a real world context. And to do that, it's going to need to have data integration. The remit is to provide the knowledge required by societies to face the risk of global environmental change and to seize whatever opportunities there are out there to make a transition so the planet is sustainable. And the three key elements of that are integration across science, co-production of knowledge, which means production of knowledge by people who are going to use it, and global participation. In order to do this, Future Earth is trying to bring together not only the scientists that are generating the knowledge, but the people who are going to apply that knowledge. And the arrow over here shows that there should, uh -huh, shows that there should be a balance between users of information and generators of information as we go through this process. There are three research three themes, the dynamic planet, global development and transformation. And in order to ensure that those three re research themes are integrated and engage with stakeholders, Future Earth has for once set up something called an engagement committee which has no real scientists on it. It's basically the people who will be using information as well as a science committee. Here are the three programs. So Dynamic Earth at the top here and some of the key things that they're going to be doing. Observations, looking at uh, thresholds, understanding critical zones and so forth. Here's the transformation section of that, implementing this knowledge into transforming society and here are the issues of global development including things like equitable access and ecosystem services. I don't think you get science done without people otherwise we wouldn't all be sitting in this room and I just wanted to flash up here the faces of the Future Earth Science Committee, their engagement committee and uh, we have to announce that Jairam Ramesh has just been appointed as the new chair of that committee. He's an economist and politician so hopefully he'll know what to do with the information. And here's the very most important part of any of these organizations, which is the secretariat, who actually make things happen. Now I'm going to have my Martin Luther moment. I just wanted to say to you that this, this is the things that I really believe in. All research is data-driven. Without data, there is no research. Data are the major legacy that we leave behind us after any program. It's no good having a program if you don't leave a legacy, and our data is what we leave. It's not the knowledge, which that will be superseded, but the information that we have generated. And the third thing is that appropriate data management has to be the core when you design programs, because otherwise the programs have a lot of good, good intentions and achieve very little. 
So having said that, I want to look at some of the data challenges in Future Earth. What Future Earth is setting out to do is to take all the knowledge we've already generated from these other four programs and then generate more. So it wants to have new observations, it wants to build new models. So existing data, existing knowledge, new observations, new models. Fantastic package. But in our programs before, we dealt with one area. So IGBP dealt with geosphere-biosphere interactions, a very limited part of the world. Um, world Climate Data Program dealt with climate data. Now we're going to be dealing with social, economic, political, ecosystems, chemistry, geophysics, data management. All of the science that's out there is going to be put in one big package. And further, we're not just going to generate the data, we're going to integrate it. We're going to deal with it in an interdisciplinary fashion. We're going to have indicators and visualizations and scenarios and ways of transforming data that will be accessible to everybody from Einstein on the one hand to my mother on the other. So we've got a huge challenge ahead of us in dealing with this. And that has been recognized in this initial design document of Future Earth. Um, which talks about, frequently talks about, the fact that there's going to be large volumes of very diverse data that are going to have to be brought together. Now, like any other program, they've set off with putting down a summary of data recommendations, and I'm not going to read through all of these data recommendations, uh, because you can go back to this document and read them for yourself. And there are some very good de document um uh, recommendations in here. It says that there should be a mandatory requirement, for example, for archiving data. It says that they should, they should make use of existing data archives, and if they don't exist, create new ones. It says there should be funding for this. Wonderful. Great. Um, it says that all the data should be documented and archived within a year of the end of the project, because we need that data immediately. Um, it says that WDS and CoData should be really involved in making sure that this data is available to everyone. Lovely. Lots of very pious statements, but then we have to think about the reality. And we in this room have to think <coughs> about this reality. Because Future Earth and WDS and CoData cannot force the compliance of people who are generating information to archive data. I wish we could, but we can't. So we are dependent on people's goodwill about data archiving. I think the next thing is that they've made these statements. They are very general statements. They're very praiseworthy statements, but they are general statements. And I think that data issues are not high on the agenda of Future Earth at the moment. At the moment, their focus is on science. In a sense, you can see that because they already have a formal science committee they're just putting in, they have an interim secretariat, they have an interim um, engagement committee, they haven't yet got everybody on board for the overall management structure, and there is no data champion present in any of those people. So there's nobody who is an expert on data and using data and interoperability, which is a word I can now pronounce. Um, we just have not yet got that focus that is going to be necessary to carry things through. Furthermore, it's one thing to archive data, it's another thing to make data accessible, user-friendly, I loved your user-friendly, Jim, uh, or to ensure that the quality of data that's out there is the best. So this whole issue of the interface with data users is not yet worked out. And meshing data sets across all of these things, all of these domains, is a lot of work and there's no consideration of how I put together stuff from climate models with stuff from social sciences. The languages are different, the techniques are different, the databases are different, the storage is different. We need to think about these things if Future Earth is going to work. So first of all, let's think about this huge volumes of data that they mention. I'm just going to give you one concrete example that I use. So our IPCC assessments are built on climate model simulations that are run by the Climate Modeling Intercomparison Project, and we're now in Climate Modeling Intercomparison in our fifth phase. And in the fifth phase, which is the one that supported IPCC's last report, 2013, we generated 30, uh, 1,380 terabytes of data. 
And that is an order of magnitude more than we generated for the last IPCC report. So I assume that the next time round it's going to be an order of magnitude larger again. This was only a fraction of the outputs that the model groups participating in this generated. It was only 16% that was actually archived in a central, well actually a distributed set of repositories that we could then exercise afterwards. Um, people have complained that about it only being 16%. They want all of it. I want all of it. But we only archive 16% because we had a limitation about the data storage, despite the fact that this was distributed. CMIP 6 is now in preparation for the next IPCC. We're already contemplating a five-fold increase in the number of experiments that everybody wants run, and everybody's demanding 100% archiving of those experiments. So that's a huge thing. And that's only one single data source that I have to use. So huge volumes of data. I'm not so much worried about the volumes of data because we are a technocratic society. We will find a solution if we have to archive this amount of data. But using that amount of data and finding your way around that amount of data and making sure that everybody starts. These are a whole bunch of climate modelers. You think they know how to write net CDF files. But every climate model has a different way of writing net CDF files. I have to do transformations of all of them before I can use them. These are the issues, the fundamental issues that we're going to have to deal with, not just data volume. There's also a question of moving targets and data quality. We will generate data. We will generate another data set next week and another data set next week. And there are, there are many, many data sets purporting to tell us about the same things in the Earth system. And they change all the time. As a data user, I am worried about this issue of moving targets and data quality and the fact that we are not addressing through our systems how you know what is the best thing to use. Just as an example, I'm, that's so puzzling. I'm a, a vegetation modeler. I use lots of different data sets in order to evaluate my models. Here's one of the ones I use. It's GFED. It's the global uh, emissions data set. It's based on observations. There have been three versions of it in the last five years. This is a value that but one version, version two, produces. This is a value that version three produces. Here's my model sitting in the middle. Um, I don't know which of these I should believe. I don't know how to make my model better if I've got these kinds of discrepancies in the observations. When we put data up, we need a system whereby you can see the aging process of the data set and when data sets have been exceeded or uh, transformed in some way, and when data sets are um, comparable and should both be used because of uncertainties. And this is an issue that is not, I think, being addressed within Future Earth and perhaps not in the wider community either. <laughs> The other issue that I'm worried about in Future Earth is this one of same old, same old. We have lots of pious um, intentions, but then we make, we build our system from what already exists. And if what already exists, sorry, if what already exists is really good, that's fantastic. If what already exists has failed in some way, it's a little less than fantastic. So one of the problems in Future Earth is that it is, at the moment, a federation of projects that currently exist under ba the banners of IGBP, Diversitas, WCRP, IHDP. Now those projects have to be approved uh, formally as part of the Future Earth, and in order to do that, they have to live up to the Future Earth standards, including those data recommendations. But the trouble is they are old projects, and one worry here is they will be bringing, from a data management perspective, many of the data management techniques that they already have. So one thing we have to think about is not only transforming the future societies that we're living in, but transforming the project management that we have in order to make it work a little better. So, what are WDS and CoData doing? I thank Rory for this. Um, so we know that WDS and CoData have a mission to support ICSU activities, and Future Earth is an ICSU activity. Therefore, we must support it in terms of making sure data is available. 
WDS has been uh, instrumental in drafting the future Earth data sharing principles so that we have been able to influence their thoughts on how to share data amongst the community. And we, or at least, Mustafa and Rory and Bernard have been advocating for a data expert um, to be in the future scientific committee in the se secretariat. I'd like to advocate for a future data team, actually, because I think they actually need an additional committee to deal with data principles in general. And we've also been consulting the affiliated projects to find out what requirements they have and promoting explicit mechanisms for governance and implementation of data management and dissemination. And we're beginning to work, or at least the Secretariat's beginning to work with funders to ensure the need for a recognition of data archiving funding or support for funding. Because all too often, at least my experience in the countries that I've worked in, is that you have um, a pious need to archive your data, but there's no money in the grant to do that. So you use it to do the science, and then you get to the end and you shove the file in a repository somewhere and hope that uh, Michael can sort it out for you or whatever. We've got to go better than that, guys. Okay? So, there are some messages, I think, for people in this room. I don't think Future Earth is going to work unless every single person in this room thinks about getting involved right now, from the start, with either projects that are part of Future Earth or directly with Future Earth or puts pressure on the people who are supporting Future Earth to make sure that data management, <coughs> data archiving, data quality assurance are all embedded in that. So I really want to make a plea to everyone in this room to get involved right away. I think it's important that the data generators, and I count myself as one of those, take archiving and documenting stuff seriously. We've tended to think, as long as we're talking to our scientific peers, it doesn't matter who else gets access to the data. And that is not good enough. We really need to uh, see that our self-interest lies in promoting these data more seriously. I do think that funders need to take this archiving and documentation seriously. Um, and I hope that we in WDS can continue pushing the funding bodies to allocate money for doing that. I think the future Earth needs a data champion or even a data team to address the issues of archiving. But it's not archiving only. It's addressing the fundamental issues of what is quality control on a data set. Not just having the metadata or documentation, but having adequate documentation that someone is policing. I think we need that person to look at access of data to data by everybody and how you mesh different data sets and how you produce documentation that is usable and useful. And I think WDS and CoData have got to assist with all of this. We've got to start thinking of these problems in conjunction with the scientists who are generating the data right away. So I will just leave you with this one thought and take any questions that anybody has. Thank you.